welcome to another episode of the Speak Your Truth podcast. <laughs> like, I, I got better sound effects and stuff now. Let me see what else I got up. What, what I got up? Oh, that was a gunshot. That was kind of lame. What's this? Okay, anyway, let me stop. So, welcome back to another episode. We are in season two. And um, we've been consistent with episodes, but, you know, I've been having people kind of cancel on me because people got shit to do. It's back to school time. So this episode is really just um, random, and we're not really going to talk about anything. And I only had one guest that came through for me today, and uh, he's here. <laughs> he's ready. Um, my phone's still going off of people telling me I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but uh, we're here, and we we just going to have some – a, a, a general conversation today. So, how you doing, man? I'm good. You good? By I'm the good. way, I'm, good. I'm Brandon, <laughs> aka B More. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so Brandon, oddly enough, I used to work at a school because you know I had 50 million jobs, and I was a teacher at the school his son attends, and then somehow, how did we find each other on Snapchat? Because I, I was following you on Snapchat. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Probably just oh. through, that's back when everybody used to add each other on Snapchat. On they used to have Snapchat, Snapchat parties. parties. Yeah, yeah. So and I'm like, what I used to add everybody pretty much, so that's probably how it came about. And you know what? I used to do that shit, too, until I figured out that I had a lot of kids. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, yeah, that, I had to block a lot of... Yeah. yeah I had to block... I definitely block... Uh, if I look at your shit and you underage, I'm definitely... <laughs> block, right. Renew. I'm like, uh-uh. No, yeah. no, no. So, uh... I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit too old for that. Going Talking on. about some doing my homework. Like, ooh, no, uh-uh. I block... The people I block from my Snapchat are, like, family members that's not cousins, like, parents, like, they nieces, nephews. Yeah, like, they nah. definitely, that's that's more the Facebook world right exactly. there. They de- I definitely leave all that off. Uh, it's, it's, it's levels to this social media shit. Like, you know, I got Snapchat, my. Snapchat, yeah. that's a little bit more, you know. I got my, uh, you know, on my Facebook, I post all my motivational messages. On my Instagram, I kind of do the same thing. But my Snapchat is where my it goes down. Snapchat, you woo, be, it goes down. You can be a little down. bit more loose on there because mm-hmm. I, def- I definitely got uh, my family members on my Instagram too. So I'll be, a li- I'll be a little bit more cautious on there, but definitely on Facebook. <laughs> my granny and like everybody, Hell all yeah. you, you know, like, you know, everybody, Past grannies and un- great aunties and, and yeah, definitely teachers and all that. So I'll be a little bit more. And I'll be seeing what people be posting. I saw this girl post like, uh, like, I don't give a fuck who my friend on Facebook. Like, yes, granny, I suck dick. Like, damn. Yeah, people be, be uh, wilding. you know, sometimes it just be respecting, but. I usually don't post on Facebook like that in all you honesty. You really don't. I don't make statuses you all the time or, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, if I post pictures, it's usually me and my son or, you know, if it's something you going on. Me. Like, I, I really don't post too much on Facebook. The wildest shit that I I used to, though, when you go back and look at your memories and stuff. Like, dude, I used to be posting plenty of petty at 2011, <laughs> 2010. Like, oh, my God, what the <laughs> hell was I on? On oh, what the <laughs> Man, I saw this girl on Snapchat today. Um, she was like, God been blessing me so much. I wish I could suck his dick or something. Like, wow. Dang. Y'all wildin'. Yeah, the internet, that internet <laughs> definitely undefeated. Y'all wild. Like, it's not funny, but it's, like, funny at the same time. Wait, let me see. Is this, is this a laughing sound? <laughs> 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 they definitely, the internet is definitely undefeated. And the internet is very vicious, too. And one, one of the things that... People just so fucking negative, and even the celebrities, because it's like on, I hate seeing that shit on Instagram. You put like a you a celebrity post a picture, and you got like five thousand, so gorgeous, so pretty. But the one time, like the one negative comment, they go reply to the one negative comment, but they don't acknowledge nobody else being positive. Like that shit irritating. See, when it comes to the internet, as far as comments and all that stuff, I was always told if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say it. So I, say I don't it. usually. Like, when people be, it just be a whole bunch of, neg- like, a negative post, just period. Like, you know what I'm saying? A negative post yeah. anyways. Like, I'm just not even going to comment. I might look at the comments and laugh and see, like, damn, motherfuckers <laughs> don't bullshit. But I'm definitely not going to put myself in that position. Because once that shit get on the internet, especially Facebook. People just share too much. And it's like, yeah, it's an outlet. Screenshot and all that yes. shit. I think that's what it is about Snapchat, though. You know when somebody screenshots you your shit. Exactly. Like, and your shit. Even your, your, your. 
y'all inboxes y'all and everything. Nothing. You know and, what I'm saying? And so they that, tell you when they save a picture to their camera, on, like, uh-uh. Yeah, exactly. You like, know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. So I think that I think that's why people be a little bit more devious on Snapchat. Hell I yeah. Say. Oh, I've seen so much. I've seen <laughs> sucking dick, titties. Oh yeah, they. I think they working. When I first got on Snapchat, though, they took a lot of that stuff off of there. Though they don't, they don't need, It was a whole bunch of pages. They be going crazy on Snapchat. Man. I was like, damn. The only thing I post on Snapchat that that's a little raunchy is like just twerking. But everybody me twerk walking. though as a female. All females should twerk. At some we do point, at some point Especially in their life. We go out of town and shit. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because females twerk when they happy. Oh um, my. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Did if you happy, when we, twerk. or when we try to make our nigga mad. Or honestly, all my Snapchat is is me driving, listening to music, doing my music Monday. That's it. That's yeah. all I do. On my way to work. Speaking of punk ass work, this is a perfect segue. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody who know me know that I get a new job, so I leave if I'm not happy. But this job, I don't want to jinx it and say I like it because it seemed like as soon as I start liking a job, I start hating it. So like, I work in government again, and um. When I, I've been at this place for a month. And let me tell you about this old hating-ass bitch. <laughs> she is for real. Da, 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 da. Right. And honestly, I probably shouldn't even, I don't even know if I should divulge. Let me take that back. Let me take that back because it's, it's a few hating-ass bitches. I don't want to single mm-hmm. out just one. So I, I really think it's crazy that a lot of older women, especially black women, they be hating on us younger women. So I've already, I be minding my business. I go to work, I go, I come home, I don't talk to nobody. And already is how many breaks she been taking. And she walks, she be, because, you know, we go for, like, walks with the little yeah. groups or whatever. She she take a lot of walk breaks. And and she wear heels every day. And my dress dresses be too tight. Just all, like, why y'all minding my business? See. Man, that's that's not even just with old women. It's with older people. Hating? That's with older, yeah, like older people all the time, like even older dudes. You know what I'm saying? They just be, I don't know, they intimidated because at one point in time, I guess they probably was young too. And that, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't even know how to really put it, but people definitely be insecure or intimidated by younger people, older people, especially like jobs and stuff like that, where it's like a secure. You know what I'm saying? And it's like environment where y'all always constantly job. around. Yeah, when y'all constantly around each other, a lot of people get insecure. Yeah, it was a few people that thought when I got hired on, I was hired on to replace them. And I'm like, bitch, I don't want this job. <laughs> like, I'm just doing it to, to get a check right quick. Like, yeah, people, people, I ain't, you know, because I, I, ugh. People I be out here real messed up in the head. They be thinking about the most out of outlandish stuff that you wouldn't it even is. think. Like, why would you, why would I, like, why would you even be on that? It is, but it's crazy because I'm like, you so intimidated by my presence. You think I'm here to take your job, and it's like, damn, bitch, is this job all you got? Like, you think I'm going to take you gotta this? Think, but you got to think about it, though. If she older, just think about how many years she probably been working there. That's probably it. That's Mostly, bad. you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, egos are tied up in what they do. You know what I'm like, saying? You know what I'm saying? So if you working at this job, and you probably been dependable all over these years, you see somebody younger, newer coming in, and they got the – credentials you know what i'm saying to even getting that type of job then of course you will that would kind of make you kind of insecure and then you're not no bad looking female either so older females (laughs) older females they definitely be on all that (laughs) hey it's a bird outside my window what's this bird on it's like looking in here look at it it's like looking at (laughs) That's that motherfucking raven. Oh my life, he tried to kill me and shit. I'm gonna be out there at nighttime when it's thunder. <laughs> <laughs> thunder gonna flash. It's gonna be rough. Uh, I'm I'm just tired of being a slave though, a slave to the nine to five, and that's why. Um, working on my book. You read the book? Definitely did. You enjoyed the book. Left me a good review. I appreciate it. But um. It, on the surface, everybody like, girl, you doing your thing. You selling these books, but it's like on the back end, it's discouraging as fuck. Where, yes, I booked three speaking engagements, right? So Atlanta, Detroit, and North Carolina is like, hey, we want you to come talk to our mentor group, to our girls. Like, yes, bet, cracking. This one group was like, we want you to come talk about suicide awareness. Yes. All of this is not in Milwaukee. I've been reaching out to bookstores and shit in Milwaukee to try to do some events. Nope, nope. We only allow people who are public figures. We only allow people with big followings. And I'm like, damn, I'm trying to put on for my city. But, like, you know, it's like that just made mm. me not like it here. 
<laughs> on God. Like this book company today basically sent me a five paragraph email saying no. Man, that's people. Sometimes you, but that's the whole thing about life, though. Mm-hmm. All your opportunities are not where you are, where you at at the moment, especially that's when it comes true. to a city or a state or anywhere. You don't have to be anywhere that you don't want to, especially if you got skills and people, uh, people skills. And be able to maneuver around the world. You can go anywhere. If you got different opportunities anywhere, then you got to take them opportunities. That's so true. And it's crazy because, like, people be like, oh, Milwaukee is a great city. And it's like, granted, this is probably a lot a lot of cities. But Mo- Milwaukee, motherfuckers really support who's popular, honestly. I, I, like, I swear to God, like, it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. Who you know. And it's like, but I'm out here working. Motherfuckers don't want to collaborate with but me for events. Can I can I say this though? Maybe that's one of the keys to life though, because you can know everything in the world, but if you don't know nobody, what what use is that knowledge? So you. But I'm working on getting to know people. They don't want to get to know me. Oh yeah, well, I mean that's a, that's a different <laughs> that's a different category right there as far as if you if you reaching out. But I'm just saying though, like that's how a lot of people make it in this world. They they probably don't know too much, but they know all the right people though. Yeah. And there's some people out here that know everything, but don't got no plugs. That's you gotta have plugs. <laughs> You gotta have plugs out here in this world to in order, you know what I'm saying, to to move around and just and, and just because people Milwaukee might be great to some people, some some other people it might not be so great because some people find success here and some people don't. That don't mean just because you're just because you was born. It, it's it's because people used to being where they from. All your family here, your people right. here, your roots here. But I'm ready to move. So if you if you see a different opportunity somewhere else, then it it it'll never hurt to go try. But it, it's just, the point is, like, I'm getting, I don't even live there, these places. But people fo- follow me on Instagram. They're like, I love what you do. To me, I ain't doing nothing major. I'm just post. I'm just, like, I don't claim to be no no life coach, no mental. I, I don't claim to be, to be nothing. I just talk about shit that I know. And that's why people be like, what's your book about? And I'm like, it's nonfiction. Like, it's, it's, it's nonfiction. Like, I just and write about shit that I know. It ain't no self-help. It ain't this. It's, ju- it's just a good-ass story. And that's definitely, that's what got me interested in this book because it definitely was real. Like, straight to the point. Like, <laughs> right to the cut. Like, yeah, okay. See, this is something I could be interested in because, See, that's how you know, more men to read. and you know, like, sometimes fictional stuff be all right, but. Can't op- everybody like to hear the truth. When they hear see stories or anything, if it's the truth, any type of movies, like yeah. the truth, they want to know the biopics and all that. They want to know the truth. They want to see what was what, what, what was really going on, the backstory. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's facts. When like. people <laughs> when people when people see the truth, they they tend to go towards it a little bit more. That's that's, all that's facts. definitely what stuck out to me about the book. Thank you. Yeah. And a lot of men read it, and honestly, of the men that bought the book, they like, um, I don't read books. They was like, but I read this. This is, like, interesting. And it's short, and so that, it's not like yeah, it's, like, exactly. a long and that was, ass. And that, was, and that was exactly my point. Like, you know, I don't, I'm not I'm not no college kid. I don't read too often. Or, you know, I right. graduated high school and all that, but right. I know how to read. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't read books too for often. Or do, yeah, I don't read books for enjoyment. <laughs> Just go pick up a book and go read it. But I do read a lot, though, like articles, you know, a lot of stuff right. like that. So I know how to read. But right. but when I picked the book up, I definitely picked it up. And I, I read it in, like, two, three hours. Damn. Probably probably less than, like, like, two hours probably. I read it in, like, yes. two hours straight, like. so. A lot of people been saying that. Yes, that it wasn't no long book where you got to go back and read it over two, three days or, you know what I'm saying? It definitely got straight to the point. Uh-uh. I'm so, I'm so excited for this book journey, and I'm working on my second book. So, you know, you saw it in there. It's called Bitter Baby Mama. Yeah, I seen that. Everybody's like, oh, shit. Like, I, I really think that that second book is going to be that book that pushed me to the top. So but I see, really that's, the whole, that's the whole thing about life, though. If you're doing something and you love it and you got a passion for it, keep yes. pushing at it until 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 your time to bubble. Exactly. Everybody don't everybody don't bubble on their first try. That's true. It takes ten. It takes years. <laughs> yeah. For everybody. Everybody to, don't. To. Everybody don't bubble. But see, then just say your time do come to pop. People gonna go back and read the stuff that you exactly. that you made before and be like, damn and, this. And that's, so yes. this been in the making. Like this just ain't no this, this ain't one. Overnight. This, 
it might be the third or the fourth book. You know what I'm saying? This right. this the one that popped, but it's like it's two, three other books before this. Exactly. That was actually good. You just and didn't have a you just overnight. didn't get the recognition or you know, you like you said, you didn't have a following or yep. you know, whatever that you needed to push yep. push it as far as it could go. And I swear when I get popping all these book companies here can kiss my motherfucking ass. And it really make remind me of honestly and people be smacking their lips, but like Cardi B, like dead ass because her um and other people that kind of like where the fuck they come from city girls and shit they've been doing this little rap shit stripping shit modeling shit for years and we ain't know who yeah, the fuck yeah. they was like, you never know people's journey until they until they get in that spotlight exactly. until they get that recognition until she came that's, on love and hip hop motherfuckers yeah. started following her seeing all her video well I think she took all her old shit down but like them old videos used to be wild and people loved them and you know she was a stripper so she had that following but it's like. Motherfuckers, and she be saying, ain't nobody want to book me, ain't nobody want to fuck with me, but it's like, now y'all calling. Man. And like, all these book companies here that's going to be asking me to come, like, no, nah, fuck y'all, I don't want to work with y'all. Y'all ain't want to work with me when I was a nobody. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers ain't going to follow you until that bag follow you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's just real life. We can't. And that's why I don't we believe can't, in you know, chasing bags. The bag is going to come to me. Especially when you're doing something that you know you're good at. And just like I said, from me reading the book personally, you definitely a good writer. Thank it was you. definitely it was definitely a couple of words. I had to pull up my little dictionary app on the, uh, on my phone. Like, okay, let me see what that little word means. Just make sure. I'm fucking done. I'm dead <laughs> ass though. I see. I'm the type of person I don't got no problem with learning new stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it was. De- I definitely learned. Uh, I definitely learned about three or four words that I uh, had never <laughs> seen before. Got the little meaning of them. So. I'm glad I can't hold. You stupid. But, no, um, no bull. I'm definitely working on it. Um, definitely getting there. I, I kind of got discouraged a little bit, and I, I was started being inconsistent with like all my posts and stuff. But I'm, I'm now that I got kind of like a tackle on like my both my jobs, work, all of that. School finna start back. I'm able to kind of get back into the flow, Man. like pictures, all of that. But anything you doing is going you gonna be discouraged about something though. Oh yeah, I'm it discouraged. I'm, like yeah. it now if you get discouraged and quit. That's a whole totally different story. Now, if you get discouraged right. for a little bit and keep pushing, then right. you're a fighter. You exactly. know what I'm saying? All you got to do is keep fighting for what you want. And I got so many dreams. So, like, th- this little piece of paper back here on my wall, that's, like, some of my goals and shit. And it kind of remind me, like, okay, I want to do this with the book. I want to do events. I want to be a speaker. Like, all of this shit. But it's, like, I'm just so different. I don't fit into nobody's box. I don't fit into nobody's mold because a lot of people – I hate going, and I just made a status about this today. I hate going to speaking engagements where motherfuckers be like, I'm going to give you the tools you need for success. Fuck that. Tell me exactly what you did, how to get to where you are. And people be like, I just prayed by the grace of God. I didn't give up. And it's like, okay, but who did you call? What did you do? What steps did you take? How long did it take? And it's like, okay, your journey may be different from mine, but at least I can have an uh, an actual tool and an actual idea. Like, okay, if I want to make my business grow, I need to connect with these type of people, start going to these type of events. Like that, the, I hate that, that women empowerment shit. A lot of that shit is just a bunch of bull shit. And they make you pay I mean, all that money and shit for what? Did, that's what I was just going to say. Just by, by you saying that, that just remind me, like, one time I went to one of them – when they used to have them blue signs, you should be here. Hell and I went to yeah. one of them seminars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, it's all that shit don't, they have you pay all that, try to pay money or pay, how you pay money and all that stuff. I motherfuckers to join that. No, they wouldn't charge. I didn't pay no money, but it was motherfuckers in there. Like, somebody took me there. You know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. asked me to come with them, and I'm like, shit, I'll come. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Right. And I got in there, I'm like, nah, this some bullshit. Like, right. you ain't finna tell me how to, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm then I got to pay money for you. To be successful, like you know what I'm saying, right? Was, and that's like the map didn't add to up to signs. me. Like, yeah, that, that was that's how you. Pyramid. That was all it was was a pyramid scheme. Mm-hmm. They it came around for a little minute. Motherfuckers got back and mm-hmm. shit. That shit every week. But the only reason that is technic is technically is, but the only reason that is not is because the person is actually getting a product. Like people be actually traveling and shit. Oh yeah, but you notice you ain't seen people with no blue signs. Yeah, lately. of course. Like, that should have been a couple years ago. Somebody um. All One of my friends still does it, and she keep reaching out to me, and I'm just like, I don't, I can't justify paying monthly for some kind of membership. And it's like, yeah, the trips be cheap. They's like, yeah, but you can, you can travel for free if you recruit these people. Like, fam. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I, no, nope. 
Nope, nope, nope. See, but I don't know. Like, I don't just my like my hustling skills is way different than that. So that shit went in up my alley. So I just I, yeah. it totally it totally turned me off from the way I know. You know what I'm saying? The way I try to get and get my money. You, really want me to you know what I'm saying? So that was that was that definitely was. I'm like, yeah. It's a dude so, that I know who real successful with it though. I mean, of course, like, of course, it's gonna be people that's successful. That's right. them, the people that them, mostly the people that's trying to recruit you to uh, yep, get out. Yep, and it sure come on is. now. That's why it's a pyramid scheme. It's always gonna be somebody at the top at the on the top. way down. Yeah, would well, you gonna be at the you gonna you gonna you gonna be at the bottom? Yeah, I don't feel like I don't feel like being at the bottom, working my way up, trying to recruit <laughs> other people. I ain't yeah, that that wasn't my cup of tea right there. <laughs> but the point I was trying to make is though, people will try to sell you bullshit, and All it depends right. on. If you got enough common sense, or if you're uh, gullible enough to buy it, yeah, I mean, the, and some people are. So I'm like, you ain't mm-mm. just like even with. So it took me a long time to publish this book because you know it costs a lot of money to publish a book, but a lot of these places. So like, basically, what I want to happen is I want to get a book agent, and I want them to sell my books like at, at a top level or whatever. So what's happening now is that these small little publishing companies, they call themselves publishing companies, they try to get new authors in and it's like, oh, you pay $2,500, you get editing, you get this and get like, no, I'm not going to pay y'all to do shit. Y'all need to be paying me. Like, this is my book or whatever. So um, I actually had a publisher in New York who I submitted my book to and they said they loved it. But they basically, and, and they like, oh, well, we need to get you a barcode. We need to list your work uh, with the copyright and yada, yada, yada. And I said, oh, I got all of that. I paid for that. I'm like, I got my copyright certificate. I got my barcode. Like, I got my, I, I like, I got all of that. Like, the like the book is ready to go. I'm like, I need the marketing. They said, oh, well, we want to list your work um, to be affiliated with us. And I and I and I email back. I'm like, so basically, so y'all can have the rights to my mm-hmm. book and get the majority of my royalties. Like, no, nah, mm-hmm. y'all got me fucked up. I did my research. Like, See, and that's the yeah, that's the whole thing. And they wanted to get me <laughs> into a contract, and I read the contract, and they said, oh, since you're a new author and you haven't been tried before, we're gonna offer you a, a contributory contract with, where you pay your share is thirty one hundred f- towards the cost of production. Like, nah. Yeah, that's nah. what I'm saying. Y'all got me fucked up. If nah. you don't do your research, people will definitely try to sell you bullshit. They, and they, and they and will. A, and there's a lot of people that go for it because they don't they don't know no better. Because they, I mean, I don't want to say that they thirsty, yeah, but they yeah. be too, they be so mm-hmm. excited. Oh, my God, a publisher accepted my work. And it's like, no, honey, that's not how it's supposed to work. Like, if you ever watched an episode of Girlfriends where Maya Wilkes, um, that publisher called her, they flew her out to New York, and it's basically they buy – they pre-buy a whole bunch of books, so you get an advance for like ten thousand, fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars, and basically any book that's sold, it goes back to the publisher. So they taking a risk. They pay uh, you. You don't got to pay yeah, shit. They, okay, they okay, they giving you a, a front deal. Exactly. So These, when when the book if the book sell, then that money goes towards they, them. Yes, and so they, they basically give you a, they the give you a, hell out of it. They give you an advance. Okay. Exactly. They gonna market the hell out of it. They gonna push your book. They gonna get you on all the different platforms, this bullshit right here where they want you to pay, it ain't never <coughs> guaranteed that they're going to push your book as hard as they say they are. You know what I mean? And yeah, then, you paid your money. let's say, for example, Barnes & Noble want to order 50,000 copies. They can make all of the decisions on my book, of the book on my, on my behalf, because they want they want the copyright to be in their name. So let's say they sold the book for $50,000, and it's like, oh, well, we going to... Um, give you 20% of the royalties. Like, no. It's basically what it is. Like, if I would have signed that contract, it basically would have been like a 360 deal, like in the music industry, yeah. where it's like the record companies kind of like pay for everything up mm-hmm. front, yeah. and you get what's left over. And it's like, no, nah, fuck that. Mm-hmm. No, nope. so new authors, if you're a new that. author out there, beware for them people that call themselves publishers. Granted, if you need somebody to edit and design your cover, feel free. Go ahead, pay them to do that. But don't ever be like, "Oh, we can get your book and Barnes and Noble and Amazon." You can do that shit yourself. Like you, you gotta, you gotta do the extra research. Exactly, <laughs> do your research. You, don't you sign a mess, you a mess around. Ra- yeah, thing. you a mess around. Be be messed up on the back end. Yeah. You, you think you was in a good deal, and, and then I, I've seen it to happen happen to two other authors here, where it's like. 
their publishing, and I'm doing air quotes, their publishing company owns the rights to their books. Me, I bought my own barcode, and I registered my book with, you know, like the U.S. Registry of Deeds. So, like, can't nobody, ca- I could sue the fuck out of somebody if they use my title, any of that. I'm cold. I'm fucking cold. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, that's what happens. You got to do your extra research. Yep. Whatever you that's that's whatever it fills you in. Whatever you're trying to do, is always some extra shit to go with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you got to make sure you whatever you're trying to do, and especially if you're putting your own money into this Thank and all you. that, you better make sure you're doing the right stuff. And it's like because it's always a risk. Sometimes the risk be the, the reward be worth the risk, and sometimes yeah. the risk be. <laughs> and with this, I definitely the risk feel like be too the reward big. Reward is great, but it's like what I don't have is a huge marketing budget so i gotta push this shit out myself so i'm tagging people and shit i'm going in groups that's i'm i'm dming random people like see, and that's the hustle though yeah that's the hustle I, i'm doing all of this trying to set up shot like dog i went to essence fest fam. That's the, like that's the grind you gotta grind yes you and gotta i'm grind. like just wait until next year i'm gonna be there again you, and i'm gonna be bigger and better because you got because you never know when uh who might see that one post that one day? Yeah, when you true. when you probably couldn't have posted. You know what I'm saying? You never know when 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 you're doing something like that. You never know who might who I might catch or who yeah that I might catch because it's a book. So you got to read it. You never know who yeah. I might catch. So you got to constantly continue and to I, I tell post and you know what I'm saying and push push your push your push your product. And one of the things that, especially for anybody trying to do anything, rapping, hair, whatever. Man, whatever you're doing that, that you need, especially you if you need a customer, if, especially if you need a customer base. Yep. You got to promote yourself. You got to, yeah. you got to promote your product. Whatever you are doing, you have to promote yourself. And I feel it's easier for some people. So it's like me, I'm selling the book. Motherfuckers don't like to read. Now, if I was out here slaying frontals. Of course. Melting them down. Shit. Of course. But, <laughs> but it's a, it's a market for everything though. Yeah. That's Because, true. because definitely rich authors out here world famous authors and all yeah. that you just gotta keep pushing gotta you never, keep like pushing. i said you never know when your break might come and some Ooh. of these rich authors that we love so much are fucking trash and it's like you be reading that shit and i'm like well maybe this was good like back in the in the 70s but i'm like this shit trash now <laughs> let me stop yeah but you you know over time though people get smarter anyways though Hell people probably yeah. in the, the smartest person in the 70s probably wouldn't even smarter than the smartest person today you know exactly. what i'm saying so over time, people get better and smarter. So, and it's crazy because seven hundred and fifty million books are printed every single year, and my book makes up just like a, a tenth of a one percent of that population. And it's like you got all the authors and motivational speakers in the world. And I think to myself every day, like, how can I stand out, or how can I collaborate and 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 come to the next level? And it's like I think about that every single day when I go mm. to my job. I just use that as fuel, like, I'm going to be out there one day. like, and, it's, and it might be when I'm up in my 30s, yeah, that's a the little whole, that's older. What See, that's what I'm saying. You never know. Yeah. You never know You never, never know when your break going to come. So until then, you got to keep grinding and maintaining. Yeah. Grind and maintain. I'm going to keep this job. Keep you know, grinding. Keep I maintaining. <laughs> keep, keep, keep pushing your book. Make more. You gonna continue to make you gonna continue books. to write your other books. So you know. My goal is to have a second book released by you never know when your next time year. Yeah. Everybody get a chance to bubble out here. Everybody get one, at least one opportunity at lifestyle mm-hmm. for some good to happen to them. Yes, but um, it's just definitely interesting seeing this whole process where it's like people don't want to work with you. They don't want to collaborate or like just just all just all type of mess. But um. It's a growing process, and I think this prepares me for when I do make it big, and you probably still gonna have some other people who bothered by my existence. Oh yeah, of course. That's everybody. In the world. That's the whole thing about the world. Everybody not gonna like you. Everybody not gonna want want what you want. Everybody not gonna see shit how you see it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta mess with the people that see stuff how you see it, and they 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 grew how you grew, and they move how you move. When you get to when you get to fuck with the motherfuckers that don't vibe with you writing all that other shit, that's when the trouble come along. So if they not vibing with you, just move around. It's gonna be somebody. It's gonna be a, somebody out here. It's gonna be some group of people. It's gonna be where they can help take you to the next level. Look at you talking about some. You not real talkative. You talking like a motherfucker. <laughs> see, I could. I'm not. <laughs> see, I'm not a talkative person, but I definitely have conversation skills though. Like that's I can conversate. The same thing. No, I see like. 
if we could conversate, you know, we'd have plenty of conversations though. You right. know, just personally, I don't know microphone, and we just had plenty of little personal general general conversations right. about anything. So I definitely could conversate, but I'm just not one of them. I'm not no talkative dude though. Like if I come around, you probably don't, you probably wouldn't even think I talk or something like that. that. True, so I be sit, I be like laid back and stuff, but I definitely. Got decent conversation skills, though. I can hold a conversation with people. Don't I owe you a, a lunch or a dinner? Yeah. <laughs> so we gonna, uh, <laughs> gonna keep that off the record. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got. I owe you too. I did, I was. I was dead supposed to take you to Texas Roadhouse. My bad. No, you know it's all good. <laughs> My bad, man. This bitch said <laughs> <laughs> it's been like a year. Like. <laughs> She damn near, <laughs> like, man, but, you know, but it, it, it's all good though. I, I, I got you. I you know, you, you know, you know my a, uh, I don't be tripping on nothing like that. No. I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty smooth guy, so I don't, I don't really place other my like you know stuff like I don't place some type of burdens on people. You know, shit, I do. I'm like, you say you gonna take me out <laughs> to eat? I'm finna remind you every <laughs> every time I see your shit on Snapchat. Like, uh, when is my turn? Ain't you oh, okay? Like, you said you're handling. Yeah, and I don't really be tripping on that because I'm like, I go out to eat a lot, so like, I you know what I'm saying? I like, be trying not to. I be trying to cook now, save some money. You know, you do that too, but I'm just saying, like, if I want to go out to eat, I go out to eat. So you know, I went tripping like to the point where like, damn, I was. <laughs> I'll probably never go out to eat again if she yeah. <laughs> Man, so like I have a lot of exciting shit that's gonna happen to me like these last few months of twenty nineteen. Like this has been a great year for me. Like I had some downs, but I'm like overall, this has been one of the best years like of my life. And it's crazy though because we only have a couple more months until it's a couple whole new decade. Fucking months, like twenty twenties, like, like damn, my birthday 90s babies, is like seven like. months away. Oh my god, I'm finna be thirty. I was born in the beginning of nineteen ninety. It's finna, it's finna be my third decade almost right. on this earth. So Me that's too. crazy. That shit crazy. Like so, you know, I got a photo shoot coming up and a, a video series. So you know, I'm going real hard with the speak your truth. And now. I'm, this shit finna expand to out of Milwaukee. Like, I got people in Florida and Nashville and other places wearing my shirt. And see, that's the that's the power of social media right there. My brand ambassador. Man, that's the, that's the power of social media because you got more outreach to reach the world because through the internet, you know. Yeah. Just by posting. Like I said, that's why, like, I, that's why I said continue to post yep. and continue to, you know what I'm saying? Because your book came out in, what, the beginning of June, right? Yep. And I just now read it. It's all, it's just the beginning of August, so yeah. you know what I'm saying. Some it might it might not catch on to everybody right away. You know That's what I'm saying. True. It might and not. You know what I'm saying. Know, everybody might not get a chance. To, everybody everybody not get it. Might might not get a chance to get to it right away. You know what I'm saying. So you got to continue to put in that work. Yep. So it's like I got a um, you know, photo shoot and a little mini video coming up. So I mean, like I got a lot like. The way I'm going to plan it out is basically going to be people speaking their truth. Like, I got the concept, but I don't want, you know, I don't want to give away too much. And then I'm going to do my holiday, holiday, holiday giveaway again. So, like, I'm I'm going to ask people, like, do y'all want me to give away an item a day like I did? Or should I just, like, pay somebody's, like, light bill or gas or something like that? Like, Okay. I know, like I want to do it big this year. You know, I love giving yeah, shit that's, away. Yeah, that's 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 what's up right there. Um, Real charitable. See, that's the whole thing, though. You know, if especially if if it's out here looking a little bit up for you, and you especially if you're in a position to do it, then I that's very that's will be. that's very that's very good. Thank you. You know, to be charitable. And I tr- I definitely try because people really do be because you never know when your blessings gonna come around. That's your, look that bird back. It's back. Look at it. It's. <laughs> Swear to God, it's bad. Wait, till, wait till you gonna be up in here uh, watching, no, and it's like, watching a movie me. one night. You gonna be watching a scary <laughs> movie. It's gonna be uh, thunder, and it's no. gonna, that motherfucker gonna be right there. <laughs> this bird is plotting to kill me. This like the second time this bird came back. <laughs> look, it's look, it's looking at here. It's looking at oh here, God. bro. Look, it flew away. It's gonna come back. <laughs> I I'm swear to God. I'm over on your ass. On my really? life. That's the second time. And it's like looking up in here. <laughs> but um, I got a lot of fun stuff. Again, the photo shoot, the video, giving away stuff. Um, my goal is by December, um, have at least like three chapters of the next book done and get that edited and submitted to different agents. And Because uh, I, c- I really think that 
bitter baby mama is something that nobody has ever seen it's different it's raw because i be telling people like yeah i was a bitter baby mama like yeah but it's real this one is gonna be a self-help book where it teach women how not to be a bitter baby like don't be like let's like okay fuck him we know he, <laughs> he we, okay <laughs> you make yourself look stupid yeah so i feel you on that you know but that that's that's deep though so and then Very it's going it's, it's cuz it, that's going that's going to touch a lot of people because yeah. there's a lot of people out here going in that situation you know there's a lot of baby mama baby daddy drama going exactly. on out here exactly you know I mean? so i've been doing my research now cuz i'm not the only story it's some bitter baby mama stories that's worse than mine so like oh yeah of course i've been doing my research man it's crazy how people really think out here like you might think your shit is worse, but it's somebody out here got a ten times gotta, worse. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? With so my book. like some people like so honestly You can't believe you, you would probably wouldn't believe some of the stuff other people done been through or I they can't. journey or they can't believe your journey. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So everybody got their own. And path. mine is not that bad. Mine is cherries compared to some people. Literally the best validation I receive as an author are people who just be like searching hashtags and shit for like black authors and stuff like that. And literally, like, a lot of people have been reaching out to me on Instagram, like, oh, my God, I came across your page. I love your book. I read your book. I relate. Like, that shit like that really made me want to cry because I'm like, damn, I don't know Man. y'all. Like, and, and y'all found me. And I, I, that's why I said, like, that's why I was telling you before we even got on the podcast, I was saying, like, I went and read the comments on Amazon and, you know, stuff like that. And it was people giving really positive reviews, like. It's very touching. You know what I'm saying? Like, you mm-hmm. people really felt that. Like, let, so. me, let me get it. Wait, hold on. I got these sound effects. Let me get another round of applause. <laughs> yeah, you know, on the internet, people could post anything. They could yeah, post yeah. whatever they want to say. So somebody could have left a bad review. I didn't see one bad review on there. You ain't never lied. Everybody, Everybody was saying he either touched him. They went through that some type of way. They felt it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody said something to that to that extent. So somebody texted me and told me that they she was like, Yo, your book helped me start going back to therapy again. I'm like, damn, really? Wow. I'm like, I'm helping bitches mental out here. <laughs> like, hey, because a lot of people do need help with that mental, you hear me? <laughs> um so yeah, uh, we talked about a lot and I did say that this is like just gonna be one of them more random episodes, but we covered a lot today. So, is, do you want to talk your shit? Is there anything that you want to say to the people out there? Or maybe somebody pissed you off today. Uh, maybe you had a good day. Like, you got some shit you want to talk? Uh, <laughs> uh, I really ain't. See, I'm, I'm, yeah. I ain't going to say I, I don't, I don't want to talk no shit nobody, about nobody on the internet. So, you know, I'll leave that at that. I ain't got no Be shit. No I w- yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's the, I don't, that ain't the type of shit you do on the internet as far as how I feel like I should p- perceive myself. You know what I'm saying? I so boost my ratings, but okay. <laughs> oh, you want the drama? <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I don't really partake in drama like that. So, okay. like I said, I'm pretty smooth and laid back, so I really ain't got too much shit to talk. Yeah. I mean, but we've been having a pretty good conversation, Ooh, you know, so. Okay. It I definitely, appreciate uh, it. It definitely was enjoyable. Oh, thank you. I like, you know. I think I just, I'm a really good conversationist. I don't even think that's a word. Conversationalist? I, I don't know. I think. <laughs> it sounds like Yeah, it sounds, it definitely sounds like a word. Because <laughs> like I feel like I fit in that category pretty much myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's if we can have a good conversation, though. Because right, sometimes people be having a conversation with me and I don't be knowing what the fuck they be talking about. Like, so. Girl, what? Yeah, that's one of them people you just got, uh uh-huh. Especially all the bitches that be like, period, sis. Like, girl, get the fuck out of my face. Like, <laughs> so that, bitch, shut them up. Them city girls. <laughs> period, bitch, shut up. Siri, like. City girls. <laughs> but I want to thank you for joining me, coming in, sitting down on the couch with me, talking. Wait, 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 this is so fun. I'm like, my listeners finna hate me. Round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effect. I, I get a new a, a new producer. I don't know how to act. They done fucked around and gave me something. I don't know what the hell that is. Right. <laughs> My audience left. That's supposed to be a gun. Like, what's this one? <laughs> Like these people laughing, right?
right, y'all? <laughs> 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 You know what though? That's how you be in the uh, on the, uh, all the shows back Hell in the '90s. Yeah, studio audience. audience. Oh, what though? <laughs> but um, but yeah, as always, tune in every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. So next week, um, we're gonna have some interesting episode lineups. Actually, in the next coming weeks, I had a lot of people reach out to me. Um, with some interesting topics. Um, I know one of my favorite ones that's coming up is one about mental health. That's near and dear to my heart. The next one we got coming up is Big Old Freak. That And it's going to be specially guest hosted by Vanity. So y'all going to get to meet Vanity. But um, I tried to do an episode about, though, if y'all don't know who Vanity <laughs> is, like y'all going to know. But, um, is that your alter ego? My alter ego. Okay. And okay. I tried kind of to figure that. Yeah, yeah, see? I tried to do an episode about being black and LGBT, but I couldn't get none of the gay people to show up. They was like, I ain't finna do nothing with other gays in Milwaukee. I'm like, I don't know what drama y'all got in that gay community, but it ain't never that fucking deep. It's just a conversation about the stigma of being black and gay. Like, God damn. <laughs> like, jeez. But anywho, um, stay connected with me, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, I am Alicia. Remember, that's Alicia with two L's. If you have a topic, you don't have to be in the Milwaukee area. You can call in. I have a lady from Switzerland who's going to be on the show, and it's going to be 1 o'clock her time, 7 o'clock our time. So that's fucking dope that she found me. So She read the book? She she bought the book. Okay. She bought the book. She's from the U.S., but she moved to Switzerland. That's what I'm that. saying. Yeah, so she has a book coming up. She too. can hand that book to somebody. You know what I'm saying? You if, never if know. If they read English, yeah, yes, because I don't. Saying. I think they speak Dutch or something. Oh, okay. In in Switzerland, as a matter of but fact. But that don't mean nobody. What language do they speak in Switzerland? Yes, it did. I was all off. And you know what? I do notice that a lot about European countries. They speak multiple fucking languages. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, when I was in London and Paris, they spoke English, French, mm-hmm. Spanish. I'm like, damn, they making the U.S. look bad. <laughs> we just know one language and shit. Well, yeah, that's because that's all we taught. <laughs> Unless right. you get, you know, it's optional that you can learn other languages. But th- there, I think it's um, mandatory that you learn at least two. But, I mean... I, I was in Paris, and the ladies were speaking Spanish, English, French. Like, they, their first language was French. I'm like, wow, I I, I don't understand French. It sounds like whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> What's your question? Anyway, so stay connected with me. You can email me, speakyourtruth at iamalicia.net with your email, excuse me, with your podcast topic. But until then, always talk your shit and speak your truth. Wait, wait, let, let's have the audience. Let's have them clap us out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.